Kendall's directing a movie? Well, Tom Hanks is following up directing that thing you do with another movie. And we have a real treat for you today, courtesy of Mr. Tom Hanks and our Nancy O'Dell. He's taking part in a major miniseries for HBO about something he really, really loves. And today he took us onto the set of From the Earth to the Moon. I'm still inspired by the achievements of the space program, and I still read about it as a hobby. In watching Hanks direct, it's obvious he's not only comfortable with the material, he's also comfortable in the director's chair. And action off skin. Second big project as a director, do you feel like you've learned from that thing you do? Well, I think so, because, you know, the, the nature of making a movie is just it's like war, you know? And once you survive that, you learn what not to be worried about. A little bit. How uh, you learn more of what your career priorities need to be and what you, sh what you should be worried about. Earth is a miniseries consisting of 13 episodes chronicling the space program's Apollo missions. And Tom's no stranger to the space program. In Apollo 13, Hanks was astronaut Jim Lovell. This time around, wing star Tim Daly is that character. It might be a bit intimidating for him to, to reprise a role that was just in a movie. Has he given you any tips on how to play Jim Lovell? Uh, just told me to wear the old navy ring. That's about it so far. Hanks rounded up a stellar group of actors for this episode, including bosom buddy Peter Scolari and rocker Chris Isaac. The select club, let me tell you. It's not a very big group, but once you're in it, you're in for a while. Down in Orlando shooting an upcoming series for HBO along with Tom Hanks. We caught up with the two of them on location. Chris Isaac is taking a break from the waves as he embarks upon a new mission. He's set to play an astronaut in the original HBO miniseries, From the Earth to the Moon. It's a real guy that I'm... Where's his name? It's probably hidden here. Ed White. And as much as I'm just like an actor sitting in this suit and, and um, whining about the 20 minutes I spent, Ed White was like a real man. He was an astronaut who was a hero. And he did... He died uh, in line of duty in the space program he, and uh, was killed in a fire. This 13-hour miniseries explores America's Apollo space program. And who better to lead this mission than Apollo 13 film veteran Tom Hanks, who serves as executive producer and director of one episode. Work of his two-time Academy Award winner Hanks is nothing new for Isaac. I'd worked with Tom Hanks before on uh, that thing that you do. Actually, Tom called and said, do you want to be an astronaut? And I said, do I get to wear the suit? Yeah, it was about that, that easy. Getting the job may have been easy, but being confined to a space suit for countless hours wasn't. And it helped Chris realize his endurance as an actor and gave him a deeper appreciation for those who wore them in reality. You put this thing on for 20 minutes and, and you, you know, you'd think you want to complain, then you realize that somebody was wearing it in a life and death situation for weeks at a time or days at a time. My hat's off to those brave guys. Guys, no hurry on this. Many of the gizmos used to film Tom Hanks series are the real thing, on loan from NASA. It's fun to touch the knob. That's not bad. Should we go back to the studio for a second just to see what it's like? Yeah. yeah and now we're back, we're back. again. Yeah. See, you got to be careful with the electronic stuff there. Can we go to the lunar? Let's go to the lunar module simulator. Let's go. That is the actual remnants of the lunar module simulator that each and every Apollo astronaut that walked on the moon spent probably 400 hours in this very room. You look you in there and you go, yeah. I'd stay in there for as long as they asked me to. And you wouldn't. What if they had some nice throw pillows in there, Jan? Then would you stay in there? Of course, Tom's no stranger to space spectacles. And it was his enthusiasm for the subject that convinced Apollo 13 producer Brian Grazer to come aboard. The space program is a rock star, and Tom is the groupie, you know? The epic series has an expansive cast, including Tom's wife, Rita Wilson, and singer-actor Chris Isaac. Say, when you say Tom Hanks, you think genius. Oh, he's really... Among the great directors of all time. Perhaps the great director of all time. That's what you think when you think Tom Hanks. Yeah, of course. Oh, Tom! Hi. Hi! Uh, I couldn't help overhearing. And I understand that uh, uh, earlier on that he was actually an actor in films as well as a <laughs> horror director. You're kidding. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's a much better gig, Chris, if you can get it, stick with it. <laughs> All right. Go. Tom is so enthusiastic about the project that when he finally had... Hanks hopped from one humorous historical moment to the next as Forrest Gump. Well, now he is at the helm of a new TV miniseries called From the Earth to the Moon and he is reliving one of our nation's most horrifying moments. As Chris Isaac and Ben Marley walk the long corridors to their set, 
It eerily recalls the walk that American astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chafee took 30 years ago. They were preparing for America's first manned lunar mission as they boarded Apollo 1 for a routine test. An electrical spark ignited the oxygen-filled capsule, and the three men would die. And they really died. They really have families out there. This scene is, a, I think, in everybody's mind, is a little bit of a heavy, heavy moment. The tragedy is being recreated as part of the HBO miniseries, executive produced by Tom Hanks, who was not there the day they filmed the explosion. Chris Isaac says the astronauts were well aware of the risks. I think at the point where they tell you, you're going to climb into the rocket, and then we're going to shoot it up to the moon. See? Thank you. I I don't think anybody thought it was a Greyhound bus ride. They wanted to do it just to see if they could do it. They all thought they were in the right place at the right time. On the cutting edge, not just of technology and science, but they were also on the cutting edge of mankind's experience. Being on that cutting edge had at least one of the astronauts worried about the equipment, says the actor playing Gus Grissom. He hung a lemon on the test craft, you know, in a very subtle way signifying what he thought of the Apollo craft. Hanks, an avid space buff, has labored to keep the technical details accurate. But when it comes time to stuff Chris's hair into a helmet, Houston, we have a problem. Yeah, this is terrible. The solution is a strictly non-regulation bandana. There it goes. There it goes. Yeehaw. Another obstacle surmounted, which is just how Tom Hanks sees the ultimate triumph of the Apollo mission. Flying to the moon should be this physically impossible thing for human beings to do and yet we figured out a way in order to get it done tom hanks 13-part miniseries from the earth to the moon has a reported 50 million dollar budget and it takes off onto hbo in april the people i love suppose you come back as an ant so what's wrong with an ant lots of activity and picnics and... you can get squished Recently, we found him on the set of the HBO film From the Earth to the Moon, making trouble with director Tom Hanks. This time, he plays astronaut Ed White. The thing that Tom isn't telling you is that right now, in uh, Moscow, it's, this is a strange thing, they're working on a series of films about the space program, but they're not going to be done before us, right? We're going well, to beat them. We're ahead of them. <laughs> we're going to beat them. I have a lot of fun doing this, and... I always feel a little awkward when I come back because I've usually been out on tour and uh, singing or playing music. I mean, I come into it and I don't do it all the time, so I'm not as up to speed as some of the guys I think that are, you know, working on stage plays and things like that. I envy that. You know, Chris doesn't get a big head about this acting thing. When I realized that there was nothing else I was any good at, I thought, well, I'm not really proficient in anything. Maybe I can fake pr proficiency, you know? That's what really what an actor does, you know, you know, actor, singer, you don't have to be good at anything else. And I love doing it. But seriously, well, it's, it's, it's hard to get Chris to talk seriously. I can't believe the guitar in the suit, sorry. <laughs> I get the helmet on later, I'll sing it for you. No, I'll sing it for you. It's like, you know, breaking up there. The world was on fire. No one could save me but you. Yeah, that'll... That'll be good. Now for the inside scoop on his future career plan. If I had a plan, that'd mean I'd be organized. You're talking to a guy who's a musician and actor and deadbeat. So the plan is I keep paying my phone bill and hope it rings. That's my plan.